reckon you should let sleeping dogs lie, but pay no attention to such cliches, because in the case of Square Enix and United Front Games' open world thriller Sleeping Dogs, there's very little time to take a quick nap. Years in the making and featuring non-stop action inspired by the cream of Asian cinema, Sleeping Dogs puts you in the role of Wei Shen, an undercover cop who has the unenviable task of taking down the Hong Kong triads from the inside. I'm here at Square Enix's London HQ, where some lucky members of their community have been invited to get some hands-on time with the game before anyone else. Not only that, but they'll have the fortune of being pestered by me for their opinions. Before interrupting their valuable game time, however, I caught up with Al Cornish from Square to see how the game's shaping up. Hong Kong's really fresh, it's exciting, it's vibrant, the street life is, is, is completely packed. When you go through, uh, for example, the night market, one of the areas in the game, it's one of the, the busiest, the most vibrant. Uh, there's hawkers shouting at you, trying to sell you uh, everything, knock-off goods, clothes, DVDs, whatever, there's people selling food. Uh, there's gas rising from vents, there's uh, colourful girls trying to sell you drinks and, and other things. Um, it's just really, really vibrant at, at any time of day or night. The team's experience with, with driving games is, is pretty much second to none, they're, they're fantastic. So the handling for, uh, we've got I think 65 vehicles in the game, all with different uh, handling models. So there's uh, uh, bikes, cars, trucks, boats. Uh, and they all handle very differently, so you can get you know, high-end sports bikes. And as Wei gets later in the game and kind of increases his space, improves his standing, you can end up driving some pretty swanky sports cars. And then you can kind of think back to the to the earlier models you were driving, you know, at the sort of start of the game. And there's a real difference in how they handle, how they feel, uh, how good they are for illegal street races, how good they are for taking people out, ramming off the road. And if you've got a gun, you can shoot one in a car. Uh, if you're driving a car, you can ram other cars and try and merge the shooting in the middle of the driving. So in the middle of a street race, you can just sideswipe another car, you know, send them flying off the road. Uh, it can get quite quite violent in the in the middle of a street race. There's a lot of the improvisation that you see in some of the old kind of you know Jackie Chan uh, classics, where we use anything in the environment. Uh, and Tony Jaa does it as well. You mentioned him previously. Uh, not just in terms of uh, how you can kind of get away from opponents or outmaneuver them, but also just how you can hurt people. So. <laughs> Well, he's very capable in and of himself. He can break limbs, you know, you know, kick people on the ground, tackle them, uh, kind of do almost MMA-style spear tackles and uh, break their jaws. But he can also uh, use the environment. He can throw people's heads into fans, use uh, table saws, burn people's faces on stoves. He's almost anything. And as well as objects that we've kind of specifically tagged up with special kind of kill animations around them, you can also sprint and just throw enemies at any time under Ragdoll and you can smash them into the corners of walls, throw them into in oncoming traffic, pitch them over the edges of, of railings to fall to their deaths. There's, uh, there's so many different ways of expressing yourself in, in combat. So one of the things we try to do is keep everything flowing together so you never have to kind of go into a shooting mode or a melee mode, you know, by, uh, by sort of swapping out special equipment or, uh, you know, pressing a sort of mode toggle button or anything like that. So. Uh, a really good example is how you, go from, from, how you can go from melee to, to, to shooting is if you've got a guy staying behind cover blasting you, you can just charge at him empty handed, vault the cover, kick him in the face and, and disarm him in one smooth move, now you've got his gun. But with that gun obviously you can, uh, you can, you can take cover, you can uh, blind fire from cover, aim fire from cover, you can vault over cover and go into a kind of slow mo mode and get some really nice slick action headshots. Uh, but you can also, if someone comes up behind you, you can turn around, pistol whip them, uh, kick them, there are combos even while you've got weapons in your hands. Uh, so there's no, uh, there's no break in the flow, it all flows together. Again, if you've run out of, uh, of ammunition for that gun, toss it and vault over the next piece of cover, you know, so smash the guy in the face with the, with the empty rifle, you know, pick something else up. So community days like this are great to, to, uh, to experience uh, you know, real people playing the game, see how they got on with it, what they love, you, you know, see uh, what, what, what really tickles them. Is it the story? Is it the combat? Is it the, uh, you know, which aspect of it? The free running. Um, we've had uh, kind of focus tests uh, hands on throughout uh, development just to try and hone the mechanics, get them as tight as they can be, as fun as they can be. So this kind of caps it all off, um, you know, to see uh, uh, it, at this stage, you know, putting the kind of consumer demo in people's hands and seeing how they respond. So yeah, it's a great kind of uh, end to the to the project, almost end. I think the thing that might make it stick out the most for me is the story. Like, uh, I think there's, it's very rare that like there's been a lot of attempts to kind of do the sort of the true crime story, but I think they might have like kind of the winning formula. Uh, I really like the combat system. Uh, it's not like a traditional shooter as you'd expect from an open world game. Uh, they kind of tend to tend to be together, but it's a free flow system similar to the Batman series. Um, so yeah, and lots of uh, contextual moves against uh, environments. It offers uh, a lot of different kinds of, of combat and driving and things and it's got a really great world that it builds up. It's really colourful, which is cool. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's got, it's got a real edge to it, which is 
really impressive and that's what you want from the game. I think mostly the combat seems to have stuck out most. Um, it's quite free-flowing like um, Arkham City, but it's got these quite visceral finishing moves which uh, kind of provided a nice closure to the uh, fighting. I'd like to have been a chance to have played with the driving and maybe the shooting mechanic, um, to get a better idea of overall, but so far, looking good. I try to go to as many of these sort of events as possible, which is why I'm always paying attention to like all the publishers' uh, Facebook feeds, yeah. No, um, it kind of, it's a great opportunity to like get the game, like get your hands on the game a bit early and sort of talk to the developers and kind of get a feeling that like you're seeing some of the magic happen at the time, like things that are still a bit of, in a, a bit of a state of flux. And uh, yeah, it's just really nice to go to an event where you know you can talk to someone and have a really interesting conversation about the game you just played. Well, I actually found out about it through Twitter. Um, Square Enix from up saying, we've got an event, would you like to come fill out this form and we'll see if we let you in. Uh, I was lucky enough to be, get the message saying yes. There's plenty more coming for, for the community. You can't go into too many specifics now, but the best way to, to keep in touch and see what's coming down the pipe is to uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or go to sleepingdogs.net for, for more information. And uh, then you won't miss out on anything that's coming.